This is part five of the restoration of my buddy Mike's Yamaha Wave Raider. The original problem had something to do with the starter. It wouldn't start. I don't remember. It's been so long. I thought you'd hit it. Sometimes it would turn. Sometimes it wouldn't. Mostly it wouldn't. I took the starter out, took it down to the auto shop, and had it tested. Now they have a bench down there. All you have to do is put the make and model of the car in, and they'll put, hook some power to it and run it for you. That's great, but they don't have anything for jet skis. So I told them it was a 62 Volkswagen Beetle. And it turned, it turned just fine. So we've got a good starter, known good starter. I painted it up, cleaned it up a little bit. It's been a couple years. <laughs> of course, it's more complicated than that because, well, isn't it always? The starter mounts to the motor right here. It has a bolt here and here. And both of these bolts sheared off when I took them out. Now, since then, I've taken a drill, drilled out these two holes, tapped them out. Now we're ready to reinstall the starter. Just Piece of cake, two bolts and you're off to the races. But then, as I said, things aren't always that easy, are they? Check this out. Output shaft from the motor, turns fine. Input shaft to the jet pump, turns not at all. Thank you very much. Let's take a look underneath this baby and see what's causing that shaft not to turn. Tell me about this highly modified car. Um, see, we got a rocket. Yeah. And some tape and a straw. What do you suppose is going to happen here when you push that button, mister? So I have a feeling that rocket's going to go straight down that line into the Browns house. Into the Browns house? Yes. Are the, do the Browns know about this? Three, two, one. In the middle of the pool. Oh my! Now why did that thing stop? I don't think it was tight enough. Oh. <laughs> All right. That is awesome. Let me see. Let me That's see. Let me good. See. Let me see. The rocket is sticking out the end of the car now. Should we just? Try? All right. You guys ready? Uh, ready? Go flight. That, my friends, is a true story. I remember the string disappearing. I don't remember it being a big deal at the time, but now that it's shown back up on the ski, it all, it all comes back to me. I had to go dig up that video. I think it's hilarious. Anyway, I don't think that's causing the problem. You can see we cut the, ski, the string off of the shaft, and then uh, you saw me put the wrench on there and try to wiggle it. It looks like the impeller's probably jammed on the wear ring, kind of like we had a problem we had on the Sea-Doo a while back. So what I'd like to do next is let's go ahead and pop that jet pump off and see where it's binding. Oh, there you go. That's two for two. Four bolts hold that thing on. I pulled two of them so far, and two of them have broken off. Gotta love a saltwater ski. Honestly, I wanna be grumpy right now. I really wanna be grumpy. If I might state the obvious, get parts off a freshwater ski anytime you can. There's two that didn't break off. I tried prying those pump sections apart. There's some tabs on the side. You, you jam a screwdriver in or try to flick it and they come apart. The steering jet came off. The other sections, they're not coming apart. We need to move on to, you know, plan B. You've seen this before. This is fun. Max, you think you can pull this jet pump off? All right, let's see if Max can pull it off. I think he's gonna need a little help.
That's right, you have seen this before. We did this at nighttime last time in the driveway in the old house. I'm not gonna lie, every time that happens, I am just amazed that that is the right procedure. But it comes right off, amazing. You guys know how much I love getting packages. This one I paid for, but it's still fun to get it. What the heck? Ah! Utah crankshaft and short block. Oh, cool. Got a sticker for my toolbox. One Yamaha wear ring. Let's see if we can get this bad boy on. Yeah, that wear ring fits pretty good. Here's, here's the problem right here. You see the surface? See how it's flat, nice and flat like that? It's not supposed to be nice and flat. It's supposed to be pointy, kind of like that. Pointier than that. It's supposed to be a really small, small tapered surface here that fits flush up against the edge. See that space in there? Okay. What's going on is this. Let me show you. This is the stock wear ring. And as you can see, <laughs> it's made out of metal. Yep, it is not a Delrin wear ring. So I guess it's technically not a wear ring, it's just a ring. That ring has swollen. There's some bulges in the surface of that metal there. That's what's causing our problems. I'll be honest, I didn't see that coming. I expected the Delrin wear ring. I didn't expect the metal wear ring. Who knew, huh? <laughs> Who knew that they would put a metal wear ring in there? And that thing absolutely chewed up the impeller. So I've got another impeller on order already. We've got the Delrin 144 millimeter uh, wear ring all ready to go. We should be able to just put this thing back together as soon as I figure out how to get that metal wear ring out. Like you saw in episode one, and two, and three, and four, and five. If you don't mind working on this stuff and you get some enjoyment out of it, hey, stay with these old skis. Eventually, we're gonna get this bad boy running. If it drives you crazy, just give up and buy a new one. Thanks for sticking with me. I hope you enjoy these. Like or subscribe if you feel it. I'll be back at you as soon as we get the new impeller. Thanks for watching.